He's not a professional, but like many of us, um, it's, it's one of the things we often try to do, and, and we learn very quickly that, oh, this is not as easy as I thought. Anyway, <laughs> I've tried it too. It, the trouble is you run out of space. That's what happened to me. I, 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 did, a, I did a bathroom, and it wasn't that big, but you ran out of space because of the cabinets. Anyway, Kevin, <laughs> where you go? Thank you. Well, I'm Kevin Gordon. I recently moved to Ottawa three years ago. Just I'm one of the COVID uh, early movers. So uh, but, um, I get a bit of a background. Um, any woodworking I did probably started in Halifax for having bought the smallest house in the neighborhood I wanted to, and then found out that it was very hard to build to put bedroom furniture in the bedrooms of a small 1950s bungalow. So right away, you couldn't go to a store to buy anything because anything you bought was too big to put in the room. So right away that meant that I had to find some means to create bookcases and places to put clothes and stuff like that. So I started out and along the way, I guess another thing that happened to me is uh, my daughter was involved in ringette and uh, we, for a short while in our life, were one of the uh, Canadian ringette manufacturers, out of, uh, stick manufacturers out of my basement. And I learned about the economies of scale because we looked at going wholesale retail and uh, found out very quickly that we had to sell five times the number of sticks to make the same amount of profit. And at that stage, we said, not in our basement, not in a factory, and left that one behind. So when I had the opportunity to come to Ottawa, I had, uh, I decided, well, my previous profession, I had to do something to jettison my colleagues, unfortunately, because they would be forever asking me to come back to Halifax to do some more work. So I enrolled in Algonquin and said, I'm busy for the whole year here, and you can't have me. And that nicely was able to jettison my contact with my colleagues. But it was, uh, as I said, filling in the blanks in a practical education of the stuff that you just don't learn unless somebody says, you have to learn this. It usually used to be you learn the stuff you need as opposed to the stuff you didn't even know you needed. Like, I didn't know I needed an 18 gauge pin need nailer, but the best tool ever as far as I'm concerned. So stuff of that nature. So that's my background. And uh, I, I thought I'd just sort of, one of the things I can add to the group, I, I, I said to Don the other day, I said, look, I have huge anxiety about, about talking about things I don't feel totally comfortable in talking about, but this is something I do feel comfortable in talking about, and so I thought I'd bring it as a project. Um, of course, as I'm talking to Wayne on the way here, I said, I didn't have photos as I was making it, because I didn't have a plan to present it in this fashion, so it's lessons learned what went wrong, as opposed to what went right. Um, and so we'll just get going on that. So if we, there we go. Okay. So it's really a lesson learned project. Uh, contact information there. This was the basement of the house that we purchased a year before moving to Ottawa. Uh, Wayne would know that there is an enclave of 1950s mid-century moderns built by Chalmers and they are very hard to get your hands on. So one came up. I was actually presenting at the Canadian Soccer Association meeting in, in Quebec City, and our real estate agent said, you know one just hit the market. And we said, why was it? And it was because it didn't have a garage, and we had to get in the car, blaze down. We got 20 minutes to see the house, purchased it the next day, and uh, sat idle for a year. And when I moved in, this is what I got in my basement. They had cats, so the carpets had to go. And it's a basement, so once the carpets go, you have to imagine what's on underneath that. And that bookcase, uh, this gable right over here, I quit counting at 56 nails to get the gable on to the side of the bookcase. I mean, and they were four, I, I counted four different types of nails, 56 nails to put it in place. Does that give you some idea about the handiwork involved in this project? <laughs> so the first thing I felt good about doing is I tore the whole thing out. And uh, it was beautiful pine, and 1950s beautiful pine. So that entire thing uh, was cut up, run through an old planer, uh, and uh, 
is now molding. There's a great big stock of lengths of molding for the basement when the project gets finished. So that's what I was looking at. And uh, I, well, I'm going to come back a bit. The other thing, my dad was down. And he said, I had all of my drawings and I had everything lined out. I said, Dad, this is what I'm going to do. And he said, don't you think you should see what's behind the walls there before you start putting cabinetry up on the wall? Yeah, one eighth inch piece of, uh, you know, the classic uh, oak paneling, okay, with that black soft wood clad board that's one under MDF, LDF, and that was it. And we wondered why it was so cold in the basement when we were watching the TV. So, of course, the first thing I learned was you make all your estimates and then, of course, you find out what's behind the walls and the project got three times the size because all of a sudden you've got to take it all out, you've got to put a proper wall up in place and you've got to insulate accordingly and that, of course, now my room shrank by the size of my walls. So again, the calculations all had to be redone. Now, we all have project requests. I don't know where these come from, but I think many of you know where your project requests come from. And the requests were, uh, 1950s kitchen, there was not enough cabinet space in the kitchen and like all good things, cabinet space should quit, I swear, about right here where you can reach it, not up there where you have to go up on the ladder. And uh, so we needed somewhere to put the overflow where you would normally put a pantry. So I needed a pantry and I was also told that, well, and what I call a dry kitchen because that's a play on the dry bar thing because there's no, no sink involved, but I need a refrigerator, that's called a beer fridge, and we need a microwave, that's called popcorn. And that was what was involved. And then we also knew that the previous renovations of the house had taken out a number of cabinets. So we had very little storage space, and what storage space was in the basement, I already had decimated because I didn't, it was, the 56 nails were actually a good job because the rest of it was put together with drywall screws and it was very appealing to pull apart drywall screws that were storage space. So the model was we had to do double stacked rubber made tough rough neck totes and they are a little higher than a standard countertop and another thing I thought as I was just doing my final drawings up I had to check that they haven't changed the size of those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have. And in fact, the design I had would not have fit the two of the new ones stacked one on top of the other. So I missed that one just by thinking, surely they haven't changed that. The Rubbermaid totes are always the same size. Surely they would be the same size. But in fact, they are. That, that was the amount. And because the counter was high, I had to redesign the whole thing to raise it up a little bit further. So. Um, it was a pencil and paper job. It was, uh, what I wanted to do is I scribbled it out and made some pictures in my book, as I've seen several other books here. And uh, ultimately, what I wanted to do was have all the door widths almost identical so it looked uniform across the, and I knew that if I wiggled it by a couple, and I'll tell you, I'm, gonna, I'm very metric, by a couple of uh, millimeters or even centimeters, no one would notice the differences but I got it pretty close. And uh, what it is, uh, the design is six different, we'll see in a second, six different cabinets, 23 cabinets, 26 feet of wall space. So this was a kitchen project uh, all through. Um, the e-cabinet systems is something that we learned in, uh, at Algonquin. E-cabinet systems is the software that they use for their uh, CDC machine. I believe that, and, and yet we weren't allowed access to CDC because uh, they couldn't, it, because they were under restrictions for how many people they put in the room, so the whole thing was off limits to us. And that's what they did to teach the cabinetry layout and design. And this I believe if you write to those guys and you say, I might be in the market for a very expensive CDC, can you send me the software? They'll send you the software. And the software is absolutely brilliant from a design layout 
and it will go all the way to the point where you can actually populate the wood on the cabinets and put the lighting in the room and zoom in the room back and forth. So it's a very high-end program, but it, it, what I used it for was absolute bare bones basic because I had the outside width of the cabinets I wanted, I knew what space they had to go in, I know how much wiggle room I had at the ends, and so I just plugged them in to make sure that those 16 millimeters are taken off in the right part and they're added to the right part because really for an outside dimension sometimes the lumber, the sheet good cutting is different. You can make a huge error and if you're multiplying a huge error over 23 cabinets, the cabinets don't fit. Or if you're running one wall, I've got seven, eight, nine, ten down a wall. You can see a millimeter, any error is going to screw everything up one way or the other. So it was just easier to let a machine do the work. And then I used Cutlist Optimizer and I have, if anyone wants to see this, this is uh, the best, I don't know if it's 490 US or if it's 490 Canadian. Mm -hmm. you, you gain full access to the software package. If you are careful with it, you can gain full access to the software package with every feature of the premium package for three days worth for five bucks. And at the end of that, you get a cut list that looks like this, which is absolutely brilliant. And uh, again, a project of this size, it's very easy to get mixed up and screwed up. So you'll see I've got little check marks every time a box, every time something got cut off. And it was incredibly efficient because, in fact, uh, I cut this off fewer panels than the e-cabinet system was going to try to get me to cut it off. Of. And I actually think I saved two panels on, on the work because I spec'd it all out with e-cabinets and then I ran these guys, which was a much more efficient cutting system. But the parts then start getting all over the place, so you start stacking parts according to which pile and making sure you have the right numbers. So I'll throw that. Is that the same as Cutlist Pro? This is Cutlist Optimizer. Yeah, but there's another product called Cutlist yes, Pro that does is. the same and, thing. Yes, there is, and I went across that, but I don't know. I went with this ultimately. Okay. I know that's another one of the ones out there, absolutely. So I'll just uh, I'll throw this out here at, at the end. Um, so that's what uh, I would recommend because it was just if you if you're cutting way too many panels, you're cutting three or four panels, you can keep all the parts organized. Once you start cutting that many panels, it was forget it. There were parts everywhere and starting stacking, and they were stacking up all over the uh, basement. Um, the materials that went into this because cost was at a premium uh, are all as cheap as I could get it within the parameters that it had to look good. So uh, the bulk of the carcasses were made for uh, melamine and uh, I think they were selling that from, uh, from uh, Richelieu at some ungodly thing like $40 a sheet. Um, rustic ash uh, is a particle board compound with uh, both uh, sapwood and heartwood and it was being made for the gables and for highlights and for the interior of my bookcases as you, you won't actually see in the pictures because it doesn't show up anymore. It looked great when I thought about it originally but once you put books in you lose the features on the back of a bookcase pretty quickly. Uh, the bulk of the doors were, uh, well all of the doors were from a white ash particle board core. They were a bit thicker the front grade was premium and the reason I put balance back in red there is that's one of the errors and we're going to talk about that in a second because, or at the end. I had uh, got, uh, originally when they deliver they, got, they have a, a truck come from another service and sometimes the truck guy can't get the stuff off so you have to hand unload everything. Unfortunately, I didn't really pay attention to the lumber that was coming off and then of course I had to pull apart my basement so four months later after I went to look at my lumber there was a problem with what is balanced back and we'll show you that in a second as to that was one of the problems. For mica, well I wanted the cheapest cabinet, uh, the cheapest countertops possible so using a Formica countertop and laminating it to plywood would be the easiest way for me to do that. So it will look very 1960s uh, for those who, I think there are a few people here who are around in the 60s. Um, 
the neat thing is Home Depot does free shipping. So when you get one of those great big roll laminates, uh, it's rather nice that they come to your house and they unload it and it comes in through your front door because I believe that's one of their products that they send straight from uh, the Framanca people. And uh, the nice thing is that when you get a 12 foot length of it, you don't have to, too many seams to have to deal with in it. And I had one seam to have to put up with and that was it. And then of course the big bucks were spent on getting a really smooth substrate underneath that I didn't care what the second layer of my countertop was because it could just be supporting structures, but the first, the top piece had to be absolutely flat to get that Formica to behave itself nicely when it went down. So that was my big, big dollar sum thing. I don't apologize. I think it's brilliant at times, but it's damned expensive. Uh, I would say when you go for cheap wood, then you spend most of your time making it look pretty. <laughs> and, Sometimes I wonder if that's actually, but of course my time's not worth much uh, and uh, so I have no trouble edge banding everything and so I, I, edge banding is, uh, it's become a hell of a lot easier. So I used uh, five millimeter edge banding. Uh, it, it's, it's very nice getting face grain uh, lumber purchase because it gives you a quarter saw as soon as you cut your edge banding off so it looks much nicer. Uh, I used uh, five millimeters on my doors. Uh, 10 millimeters on the carcasses and uh, 20 millimeters on the countertop and that's going to render all those sheet goods almost indestructible from getting hit by something. And then so, uh, sorry, I excuse, use... Excuse oh. me. The, the, the 20 millimeter for the, for the countertop, sorry, is that, is that how thick it is? Uh, thick in this dimension. Oh, in, 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 like yeah, in this dimension, not this dimension. Yeah, you, no, you got you got to overhang it properly. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> it's an edge banding, and, okay, and, okay. and I tell you, when you see the product, yeah, uh, the countertop went into. I didn't mention uh, some things. I'm not going to talk about, but uh, I can. Um, the countertop went in in two two lengths and had to abut at 90 degrees, and it had to be a perfect 90 degrees because, of course, the Formica is coming in on top, and I'm and so the whole thing got, um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I glued it, but I definitely screwed it in place, put the Formica on top, trimmed the Formica off, and now we're edge banding a piece that is absolutely massively huge. So getting clamps across it and doing that, and then trimming that <laughs> edge banding 20 millimeters was a nightmare because, of course, the router to get the it is is in the vertical position. Mm -hmm. I do not like that under any circumstances to be routing in that dimension. And uh, but it got down close enough, and it all came together in the end. So I guess it's okay. And uh, the drawers uh, again were maple. I yeah, the drawers because I was told I had to do proper pantry drawers, so I had to do full extension drawers. So that's where the maple comes, and I'm. Only too thrilled that KJP lets us sort through the discords in the cabinet maker's shorts out back because that is a bargain and a half by the time you get to the shorts. You get the ones you want in the width you want and you know, you've got enough board feet you're down into the huge discounts on what's already discounted lumber one way or the other. So that's the only real piece of wood in the entire project other than the ash. Now, I have been a devotee of the 32 millimeter. I don't know if you guys do, you know, 32. Okay, the 32 millimeter cabinet making system. Um, I made the point that when I moved to Ottawa, I was going entirely metric uh, until I did the basement renovation, and I still do some measuring otherwise because uh, it just works out with the lumber. But uh, I think the, the the guts of 32 millimeters. I mean, there's some craziness where all your drawers have to be multiples of 32, like forget that concept, okay? But the guts of it are that 37 millimeter back set on the five millimeter holes, which are drilled 32 millimeters away from one another. And they can be drilled in sequence, or you can skip some of them if you want the cabinets to look like, well, if you want them to look a little different, I don't say better, different. Um, so that, as far as I'm concerned, is all you need to know about the 32 millimeter cabinet making system uh, with one qualifier which we'll show about those five millimeter holes. And this was the first time 
that I, as I said, drank the Kool-Aid. Because this project, I set out and I said, let's do the full 32 millimeters with the European hardware. hardware. And how does that change the entire thing? And, and I would say, for me personally, that was a game changer. I will never make another cabinet without using European hardware. Okay, and I brought some to show you what it looks like because it's weird. And you go, how is that any better? Well, once you've drilled those holes, the whole system starts coming together because of the parts that are designed around five millimeter screw holes. And that's what uh, we'll be talking about. So, uh, yeah, the five millimeter holes, I mean, yeah, they, for years they've been there for the pins for me. You know, I put the pins in them. I, that's what they're, that was what they were designed for. That, that, no, those five millimeter holes will accept European screws, which are those, that weird thing there. And you can see them up front. So I had, you know, years ago thought, well, what is this pause drive thing? So one of the Blum screwdrivers, and they drive Blum hardware, which have these peculiar little indentations. I don't know if you, I suspect you can drive that with any normal screwdriver, but that's what it's designed for. And the point is that this is designed for particle board. And once they go in, they are tougher than nails to get out. These are not normal screws. They, they are wild. The other nice thing is like like Robertson screws, you put them on the end of the screwdriver and it stays there so you can... Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, it, it'll be one step further than that as we... Um, oh, yeah, well, I probably have time to talk about it now. I learned also in this process that uh, Richelieu makes you buy the parts of the hinges separately. And Look at this little friend. This has got two pre-mounted five millimeter screws ready to roll. So you don't even have to worry about keeping those things stuck onto your screw. You just slap that on, screw it in, it's done. And that went into the two five millimeter holes that are 32 millimeters. So you know that when you're doing your drawer, if you balance your 32 millimeters, the door, you just make sure that you balance these things at the right distance and you're off to the races. So the door will be at the right height. Um, before I start losing parts here. Yeah. Also, there are these little friends. The five, the, the quote, the quote, metric Chicago screw, which, which is absolutely bloody brilliant because the diameter of that thick one there is exactly five millimeters. You can slide it in from one cabinet and you can drill through the five millimeter on the other cabinet, you hit the two up perfectly and put them together. And Richelieu will sell you, the nice thing is, they'll sell you the bolts and the shafts differently. So you can actually mix and match to get whatever surfaces you're trying to pull together with these particular bolts. And again, that's what the five millimeter bolts are there to do, is to pull the cabinets together to make them all into a unit. So you don't have the problem of drilling blind holes. And they sort of look they look like they belong there. They're not perfect. I mean, I, years ago, I, there were some plastic headed ones that looked a little nicer on the white, but they don't look too bad. We'll look at one of the pictures of that shortly. Uh, do they come in brass? I wish. No. Um. Aluminum. Now, somebody else somewhere might make them. Yeah. So uh, I haven't looked very hard, but they're referred to as metric Chicago bolts because of the five millimeter. And so, and, and as I said, I, I, you know, I've used them in the past, but never really, I was always taking the drill and taking the two cabinets and clamping them together and reaming it through. And then, of course, it matched. Yeah. But this is just simply with attention to detail on those two perfect systems, then you've got exactly the system to stick your cabinetry together. And if you don't, if you believe in the, just line it up and line bore the whole thing, which I thought, oh, that looks ugly. <laughs> But then, of course, I lost a few of my shelf supports by making sure my cabinets went together properly. So remember that that will do, pull the cabinets together, do the hinges, do the shelf supports all together. What did you use to line up all the, uh, all the holes? Did you use the uh, That may be another that day up? of talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. There's a trick um, for that. 
I'll come back and talk someday about dowel, doweling, and, and uh, I have a, a doweler that has a system that you can line bore, and you can line bore faster than uh, the festool. So the festool system is sort of weird, but this one you just bang, 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 and it actually has a register that you lie down. You get it organized, you clamp it down, and it's down, 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 all the way down the length. So yeah. it's, I, I was looking for equipment that could do line boring quickly, and I won't say inexpensively, but in a home shop. Yeah. So maybe I've, I've been using the Lee Valley. I don't, know, I don't even know what they call it. It's like two rails. I started with Lee Valley two rails. Yeah. I sold Lee Valley two rails. I then went to Dowell Max, and then when I left Dowell Max, I will say I went to Maffel, mm -hmm. and Maffel have that Dowell system. It went everyone. It, you either love or hate dowels, and rather than go to the fest, once I priced out Festool, and going to the what are the funny, the do, Dominoes. Dominoes. Yeah. Okay. Versus going to the because there were just too many parts you had to start. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not dissing Festool. There may be some lovers here of it, but. Um, you have to buy parts and more parts and more parts and more parts and yeah. I just. I looked at the total and I said, I can Ouch. pay a little bit more for this, but I'm far less than the green system. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I should show you it someday in Dowling because it's very cool, but that's another day. Is that okay? Yep, yeah. yeah. no, no. So I, the and, and there the are, and, but I did before I did this, I looked it up and there are lots of jigs now finally out to the market that make those, that 37 millimeter mm -hmm. offset really easy to do because if you get it in properly you go bang 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 with a drill with a depth stop on it and then you just put it in put the register on the back and keep on going down the line yep. Craig, so Craig makes one. just as quick yeah Craig makes one it's yeah it works fine and and they work very well so and so I went then from Dalmax to this and that's where I'm at but you, as I said, I checked because I'm going I'm not going to talk about that because it's really so easy don't mean to interrupt your phone. oh we interrupt everything <laughs> Edge banding. I have done way too much edge banding in my life. I have read about it. I have looked at what people say to do. They told me use a use a router. Oh geez, I really looked at that Festool router and those videos that just went like this and it just did the job and I said I'm gonna do it. No. Nope. So I built some jigs to try to take my router up on edge and take it down the edge and then get a lighter router and try the same thing. I just, different bits, couldn't do it easily. Took it to my router table, couldn't do it easily. Saw this thing, and I said, no, that can't really work. By God, that is the fastest way to trim um, edge banding known to mankind. So, but it was going to work. But it's just a hunk of melamite that was sitting on the floor, and I'm going, I'm just going to try this out and see if it works. And by God, you just fire that thing through and you can almost trim it to finish with your table saw with no effort whatsoever and is it ever fast because it's just through one, flip it over, through the other, flip it upside down, through and then the other way through, we're done. And now we're down to a final trimming element. So it's just a thickness, it's just a piece of melamine. Uh, piece of melamine. That's, of melamine that's the thickness of, of your door, right? Or, so so it, it just cuts away like that, yeah, yeah. and you set the blade just slightly proud of the face yeah. here for whatever you want to feel like trimming off at the last minute. So if you get a burn mark, you've got to leave enough that if you're going to burn it, you got to have enough. Some people never burn it, okay. <laughs> Once in a while, it will burn, <laughs> and you got to get that off. So, uh, um, so that's what I did. Uh, what I then did is I learned that the fastest way for me to get through it is just to take a plane, put it at 45 degrees, put the corner of the plane angle on the glue line and just trim it down the length. And as long as you're careful and don't take too much off because you don't have that much left to take off, I can do it in about three or four passes. Uh, uh, let's see what I also say. Uh, How did you... I'm not quite seeing what you're doing there. It looks well, like you're... Doing? Okay, you're here's my, you're against the uh, the vertical, but when you're first starting, you've got uh, overhang on both sides, don't you? Yeah, right. But but it's lifted right. up a little bit. But you see, so that my it, it my pressure underneath. point here is well above, so it's sitting yeah. down. Okay, uh, the 
Okay. There's a gap between yeah. between the top of the of we go. Your, of the table right. and the underside of your <clears throat> of your, your jig. This is sitting so, in the jig, so, yeah. and this is sitting out, and the pressure point on this is up here. Uh -huh. It's not down low. Yeah. But there's a gap. I think and the question gap. is the gap. There's, yeah. there's a gap between the top of the, 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 uh, the table and the underside of that vertical white piece, which is just a piece oh, of wood. Oh, so you're always yeah. trimming. So it just close slide, it, so, so there's no okay. trimming wood. And, yeah. 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 And I'm leaving a little wee bit teeny, teeny, teeny overhang at the end of it. So you just set it up once. And, yeah. 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 Right. You're being cautious. When I set it up, it's like, I don't even trim. I just, just go through the saw and that's it. That's my edge. <laughs> and I could tell you, Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's 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 so so. My point is, compared to all the other ways I did this, this is like it takes a third the time. So yeah. I, I that's where I came from this, and I went. It takes a third the time. Yeah. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to. I'm not. Oh, I you know I and I and I will admit my first one was too big. They said narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower. And so the next time I set it up, I may set it up just to do it in one pass. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, I've tried, I've tried it with a rotor, with pretty much the same setup, yeah. with, a, with a rotor bit, and the first time it catches it and, and just oh, rips yeah, it, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, that yeah. didn't work. You no, know, the table saw pulling down into it does a really nice job in terms of taking it off. You have a special blade on there or anything? No, no, just like standard combination, combination blade. blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, uh, that's my combination blade alone. Yeah, when yeah. I'm doing that, I use an 80 zoom. I don't use anything special. Yeah, just, um, oh, sorry. Um, what the hell? Okay. It's really a rip cut, right? Yes, it's a rip yeah. cut. Mm -hmm. uh, edge trimming, you just, uh, I just take a flush uh, trimming saw, which uh, uh, followed by a trimming plane just to take the, just to get it perfectly cut for those other ones. Now, carcasses, um, okay, whatever. Tops and bottoms, eight millimeter glued dowels. Okay. Back planted on, positioned and brad nailed. Who cares if your carcass is a little wonky initially because once you brad nail it, it squares up completely. And uh, then uh, number eight, one and a third coarse thread screws. Drill them and position them. And if no one likes that, that is the Architectural Woodworking Institute quality standard. So that's what the architects are asking for in a planted on cabinet. And uh, I think the one thing I've learned is uh, cabinets are completely overbuilt. You know, when you can start standing on your cabinets, you know, you should, they should wiggle. <laughs> no, I don't think they should wiggle a bit, but, but the point is, I've got wasted cabinets in my house that we made them into stepping stools because they're so incredibly solidly built <clears> that they that they don't do that. So that's um, it's fast, it's easy, and no one knows any better, and it will hold up for presumably as long as I need it to hold up for. And that's the reference for that. So this is the installed product. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, well, we're not going to have the world's fastest uh, feedback here. Oh, it's an old it's computer. It's swinging from one side to the other, and it's a little... George, it's your computer. <laughs> it's, I know, it's years and years old. Okay. So that's the whole project from one side well, to the other. That's really okay. nice. That's a really nice clean install. Uh, yeah, obsessive compulsive. Okay. <laughs> uh, I... I, I want, okay, yeah, now I, point, point out the parts that you know. Oh, here we go. Now, now we're getting the fun <laughs> stuff. We've got screwed up on it. Okay, okay. Let's talk about the screw-ups. Um, just a concept. Um, the whole thing is sitting on... Uh, on uh, everything I build in my basement I expect is going to get wet sometime. So that's all... That's solid. That actually is a piece of ash front mounted to the, base, the baseboard down there because I didn't... Because it's essentially a plywood ladder base to do the whole thing. Okay, uh, I'm going to show pictures first before we start talking about the mess ups. <laughs> well, those that were. Um, so that's into the corner. 
I'm still grappling with what I'm doing above the fridge. I originally thought I'd put a cabinet in there, but I realize it's a hell of a lot of work for not much useful space. And if anyone ever wants, you know how non-standard fridges are. I, I've already w moved into a house where I took a jigsaw to get my fridge to fit. Mm -hmm. So um, I may just choose to leave that as is. Um, so that's uh, the one side, and you can see the melamine. So I just had an extra piece of melamine uh, of, uh, of the uh, formica. formica floating around. And I said, crap, I'll just laminate it from leftover melamine and slap it up on the back because it will sort of look okay there. Mm -hmm. And you can see in part, every time you see a gable, you're going to see the hardwood, softwood of the ash sort of showing itself off. And I'm not really planning on talking, although I brought the instructions for those 45 degree cabinets. Uh, not many places you can find that. Actually, Blum, their instructions are absolutely spot on with the hinges. They are absolutely perfect. Follow the instructions directly, you will make a perfect cabinet. I built a, a mock-up and then found out that I, my cabinet doors were within one to two millimeters of what Blum told me they should have been. So that's a 45 cabinet to fill the corner. That underneath it is a blind corner. There is no point in building anything there because it would just be too hard to get into. So I just left it as is. And I wish I had a picture of some, somebody actually for how I don't know if it's Halloween, they actually put a skeleton <laughs> in the, it was brilliant. It was the blind corner. Somebody put a skeleton in it, put the cap on the skeleton, and sealed it off just for somebody in the future. You, you, just, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing the tops of the cabinet doors ah, on yes. one in the corner. Yeah. Like, there's no, no threshold, no, no gap, no nothing. No, Don't they nothing. wind up sweeping That's the ceiling? That's a two millimeter gap, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two Pretty millimeters. Me. <laughs> two millimeters. They clean. They come across cleanly. You're no a one's, brave man. No one's putting crap on that countertop <laughs> because it's just going to get swept onto the floor. <laughs> um, yeah, that's um, par for the course in terms of. Uh, I'm immediately drawn to this black thing. That's a camping gear hanging out on me. I should also say as I'm doing this, I really have a huge uh, recognition of the guys who do real estate photography. Because to take photographs of this, I was plastered up against the wall and I had my big lens open and my depth of focus is shit. So I apologize when you see stuff where some of it looks in focus and some isn't because those guys work really hard to get good looking photos of your houses. This was not easy and I already see here, look at that incredible distortion of those cabinets getting bigger as they go. So that was that. Um, I will show you why. Uh, it, so this is try to be as clutter free as possible because it's storage stuff. So you don't want it. I was told I, we don't want to see storage stuff. So that's the extent of it, and the far side is a big storage unit, which is still being sorted out as to what's going in it. But you could easily haul skis in there. You can't put uh, paddles in there, but skis certainly, or kayak paddles, as the case may be. This is the depth of focus problem. But yeah, that's a very small gap. And uh, that's... <laughs> Okay, it's a small gap. <laughs> it's a small gap, yeah. Uh, there are the uh, gables with the with the rustic ash in them. And that's really nice stuff. Uh, that is the uh, is the those three ba bottoms are all pantries. There's an air coming with this too. And that's full extension drawers coming out. And those are the full extension soft closures, courtesy of this institution, which were the cheapest ones I could find that could do that. They're showing you how much wiggle room we had at the top of the two Rubbermaid containers. They go in just, but a uh, reasonable amount on either side, and that's worked out quite nicely. And that's my bike storage stuff. This shows you why you cover up storage, because it is incredibly unsightly otherwise, so that 
that's the arts and crafts for the kids when they come over uh, and nicely covered up so we don't have to see it when they're not over. That's my project is to figure it. It's supposed to have, it's going to have a hanger in there. It just hasn't made it yet. And unfortunately, I'm starting to renovate the back, that wall again, so it's going to take a bit. Now, these are the, I really love these handles. And, uh, but they're, and we've got one to show you. Okay, so I brought one of the doors in to show off the handle. Um, interesting hardware, but that led to an interesting challenge in and of itself which we'll get to, because now I think we're into the, oh, no, this is a review. So that's just my point. Look, that's the point of seeing. The hinge went into the five millimeter holes. The two Chicago screws went into the five millimeter holes. And the shelf supports go into those five millimeter holes. And if I had chosen to, I think next time I do them, I might just choose to drill the hole damn lot of them rather than figuring out which ones I'm putting it in and which ones I'm not because it's just easier that way. And if you balance them properly, it makes it easy to run a whole chain of these things to get them together because I was shocked how easy it was to put these things together. Now it did help that I wasn't putting the uppers in installation in the air because these things sit on the bottoms. And yeah, they, they, it was... <laughs> <laughs> The biggest problem I had actually was getting all the cabinets to organize themselves down a run of six cabinets, was eight cabinets, and that's when things got a little wonky. So, remember my problem. Here's the first one. So when I flipped that lumber upside down, that's what I found. Yuck. Recognize it? Mm -hmm. That's the particle board core coming through. <laughs> oh my, not to, well, it certainly wasn't expensive ash. It was less expensive looking ash. So, what do you do? Well, I thought I could, okay, I'll get some, I'll get some veneer and put it in. I'm gonna look, gonna look like shit. <laughs> so, anything? Well, I mean, there's any number of things. You could fill the void with epoxy, flush yeah. it. Color. Um, hmm? color, it. Color it. Oh, I love that thought. Okay, so here's what I did. Kintsugi. Uh -huh. So, joining with gold, I really wanted to do this with, uh, with um, gold uh, leaf. <laughs> it's not that expensive. I mean, I really thought, what the hell? Because all it is is you, you put a glue bond on and you slap on a little sleep gold leaf, you rub it in, and then you tear off the leftover and you're done. Okay, and, and I looked at buying some and it was getting a little, it, it not, but the point was cheap, okay? So anyway, uh, and appreciating that uh, the broader philosophy of embracing the beauty of human flaws. So I don't mind occasionally embracing flaws. You can't, don't hide them, make them bloody visible. And so it's a concept of knowing that that's what was done with, so uh, consuming, is they use a resin glue, which is black, and then they have gold dust platinum dust and silver dust that they mix into the, and then paint the black to get that result. And it is truly amazing that, of course, that was the only free thing I could get in terms of pictures, but if you look up the stuff, it is absolutely gorgeous in terms I always wonder how the hell you make the cups break perfectly without bad little fracture lines in them, but that's another issue. So this is what I did. I took Black Sharpie. Oh, I wait. I put a layer of poly on that because I didn't know what was going to happen with my black Sharpie without a barrier for my black Sharpie. So I put a layer of black Sharpie on that. Sharpie makes metallic Sharpies now. Okay? And I coated it with metallic Sharpie. <laughs> and that's what you get at the end. So it it isn't that it's a, it, like it's an error, and it's not, I'm trying to hide you from an error. I'm just going to show you, there's a freaking big error here. And like it or not, that's what it is. And, and it's in the back side of the doors, so if you flip open my doors, you see a few of these things floating around. And by the time I was done, I realized there were, every sheet I was trying to cut around the bloody errors to get the doors done properly. So it was a nightmare. So I guess the other message is, if you take deliverance of 
uh, like 14, there must have been 20 sheets of, of uh, panel goods. Check them before you let the guy leave with them. Because after that, four where, months where, later... Where did you get the sheet goods from? Uh, that was Rich, I will say, that was Richelieu. Okay, because I usually get it from Commonwealth. Everyone's told me, and go to Commonwealth. Go to Commonwealth, because you just go in and the guys come out with a pallet and you look at it and you take that one. Yeah. Oh, not that one, that one. Yeah. I think that's my next message is... I'm doing, I'm gonna, I'll give that a go next time. So this piece, you can see it up close. It looks way better in the photograph. Of course, you always make your photographs look better than they do in reality, but you can decide whether you like it or not, but that's what I did. Now, this, this was brilliant because I put my drawers in, put my hinges on, and I'm showing them to my wife. And I open the door, 110 Blum hinges. 110 Blum hinges don't clear the inner of the cabinet when they open up fully. And as you've got an idea for my clearances, I don't, they, I don't leave a whole lot to chance. <laughs> she looks like she can't get the drawers out. So all my, all my drawers were binding on the hinges. So, um, I said, I can't be the only idiot who's done this in the world. And I started to look, and I came across the Blum 155 hinges, but then the Blum 155s take the door, and if you're running 110, all your doors turn to 110. The obsessive compulsive is coming out of here. Um, so instead of 110, you're running them all the way back to 150, and you can see from that tight little place, I don't need my doors going 150 because I've got a secondary problem of where the doors are hitting against. So ultimately, I found out that there's a 125 degree hinge that does the exact same job. And what it's called is it's a zero, you need zero protrusion when you have them, when you're running them like that. And you'll see a lot of workarounds. I looked at all the workarounds, they were all but ugly. So we're going to show you this system in action here. So what it allows, it allows two things. It allows the door to clear the inside of the carcass. But the other thing is I hadn't realized I planted on a gable onto that, and the door has to clear the gable too. So the door has two problems. It has to get out of the way of the inside and get around the outside. Okay? And that's... Ultimately, uh, it was a better part of a day saying, surely somebody's had this problem before. Surely there's a hinge out there that fixes this problem. And this should, hang on. Okay, it's gonna be a bit jerky, but that's life. Okay, so there's a door clearing the outside gable. Okay, coming around now and extending to clear the inside of the carcass. Now, here comes the drawer. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because otherwise, you're mounting those hinges on a piece of wood or something and then putting them on the door. And So I thought that worked out. You didn't, it, it, you didn't actually plan. The I didn't plan that. Be exactly the same depth as the inside of the drawer so that those cans don't wind up clipping the hinges it's going by. No. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, translation, I, yes. I got yes. really lucky here, I got really, really okay. lucky okay. with this hinge yes. because, because I wasn't even aware that I had, until I put the hinge, I wasn't aware that I had the gable problem. Mm -hmm. looking me in the face. So, so at that stage, I just wanted to fix the one problem, and then when it started swinging out past the gable, I went, hallelujah, and then I'm sitting there, and I looked at that and went, oh my God, it's not even going to hit what's in the drawer. I know, like I'm looking and, at it, you got like a, maybe so, a millimeter's clearance. <laughs> but everyone, if you go home and you look at your pantries, somebody hasn't taken that as a solution for the pantry. And these, these hinges themselves, I mean, it was a nightmare. I knew they had to exist, so I had to look for the better part of a day to find that particular hinge. Now, in the end, it's in Richelieu's catalog, if you know what you're looking for. But that is the perfect hinge for that particular thing. And it makes the, it makes the pantries look good and function 
absolutely brilliantly. So, happy, um, happy wife. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Very happy in that regard because her first one was they don't come out. <laughs> now, then I'm going to leave with the last one, which is if you're going to use these <laughs> mounting things, they get in the way because they're on the edge. And one of the errors I will tell you is that I thought I'd side mount, I originally wanted to bottom mount them, and then I tried to side mount, I side mounted on a couple doors, and I said, this is not going to work out. So I went back to my original plan of top mounting the bottom ones and bottom mounting the top ones. And just to remind you that that hinge has volume. And if you're going to have two doors, make sure that, not that hinge, that handle has volume. So if you're mounting two doors and swinging them, you've got to make sure that those don't hit one another. And that was one of the things I learned with this, is just be aware where your hardware is going. Because you think, ah, the doors are on, let's just drill the hardware. <laughs> and you're off to race as well. This one is two doors in a corner, swinging out like this. And... Uh, Get, get in the way of my hardware. So the nice thing is, in that location, I just shift it down a little wee bit, and it, it uh, cleared itself out quite nicely. So these are literally just screwed into the top? They're not, uh, they're not them incised? Here. This one has one. They're, so, so they're not they're not incised into the wood? Nope. They're, uh, what to, you do is flush. just uh, you yeah, know, okay. flush out with a router yeah. and uh, drill the screw from behind. And so really solid because they're pulling they, they, they are very solid from a pulling perspective, and they disappear. So when you look at that project, you don't see a single handle in it. I like not having to see handles if I can. It's hard to get a nice looking handle in my mind. Some people like their handles. I don't like to see handles if I can. Um, did, you, did you consider, um, I don't even know what you call them, you know, the kind of hardware where you push on the door and the door pops open and Expensive. <laughs> Really? Well, yeah. a little. A little. I've done a project yeah, I've considered. I considered it um, one way or the other. Yeah. 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 I just. I think I. I, I fell in love with these handles. Oh, and, okay. Uh, I was going to say because like the the, yeah. the push pull thing got, yeah. got you written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what did I bring in terms of if people want to see stuff? Okay. Um, I have uh, front to end. The cut list thing that you get printed out if you need it. Uh, the instructions about those 45 degree cabinets. That, that's the extent of everything on the internet that I could find. I've got a baggie of the European screws and the uh, appropriate screwdriver for them. <coughs> Just in case you ever want to see Sharpies. I'm sure you've seen Sharpies before. The reminder that uh, every piece of hardware is, and you can tell which ones are the 32 millimeter system because they're the big mothering holes there because that's for the five millimeter screw. So you see you put one line there, one line there, one line there, and if you're building a pantry, you can put those shelves anywhere you want because they'll go up and down mm -hmm. like that. So every one of those shelves in there can be moved to a different location within the confines of the depth of the drawer because it's been built on the 32 system. Yeah. I brought one of the doors, which is, there we go, right side up. It has the conventional 110 hinge on the top with the 5 millimeter mounting system. This, you'll, if you play with, it's a wild one, okay, just to see, it's hard to visualize what it does without seeing it on the, on the this is the, uh, the, the 120 zero protrusion system. That's the handle on that end. And that is the void. <laughs> Actually, it looks all right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not bad. That's I, just you know, Sharpie. For, for a Sharpie. I mean, yeah. now you can get metallic Sharper too if you want to pay the real price for the oil version. I don't know if it, I bought it. I don't know if it does a better job because I was sort of happy with what this did. So I'll throw that out as well. And then, uh, as you said, with the obsessionality, I always love this. I brought this just because if somebody came out with 32, a left-handed metric measure. There's only one manufacturer of those in the world. And does it ever make life? Does it ever make? Door from your what? Is that the actual door? That's a door. 
Oh, yeah. A door or the actual door? As in, as in, does that have to go back onto a cabinet? It has to go back on a cabinet operator. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Oh, don't drop it. Oh, am I worried about dropping it? Well, you brought your Sharpies, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just, sharp, I'll just Sharpie the whole up. Well, you know, no, it'll, it'll be fine. It, it's, it's tough stuff. So I'll put it over here and put the rest of the questions. Or, okay. uh, yeah, so all, all that hardware you can get from, from um, Commonwealth. That's yeah. Way cheaper. Oh, jeez. Now you're, then you're just oh, rubbing yeah. it in there. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, yeah. You just, but you just set up a, an account. And yeah, so it, obviously Canada Wealth is a better option than, uh, than Richelieu. Now, the other thing I've learned is that Richelieu ships everything from Montreal by sheet goods, which means I take a hell of a beating if I order anything. So does Commonwealth yeah. deliver? I'm not sure. I have a pickup truck, so I just go and get it. <laughs> Com Commonwealth delivers. Okay. So they yes. So that's all I have to say, and uh, I hope we can see Ash in the future, but we have my friend, the uh, borer out there, which has uh, yeah. unfortunately made the world a different place. Question, sure. Um, you don't have to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. You